we're um, you know in conversation with our experts they're still waiting by uh, to chat with us so let me quickly um, you know welcome once again our Chandrasekhar, Tarun Patak, Jaydeep Ghosh and Prakash Diman on the show now gentlemen thank you very much uh, you know for patiently waiting by uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar first wanted to get your thoughts what did you make what were your key takeaways well I think you know that uh what we saw was the telecom operators reiterating in front of the PM their commitment to the timelines, which I think are very, very aggressive and impressive uh, because, uh, you know, rolling out 5G has its own challenges in terms of uh, infrastructure, uh, in terms of uh, the, uh, like we were talking about, the user equipment and uh, the content and the use cases. There's so many uh, fronts on which uh, battles will have to be fought. Uh, but because I think it is very much in the interests of the telecom operators and increasing their revenues quickly uh, in order to service the uh, commitments that have already been made for paying for the spectrum, uh, it is very much in their interest to ensure that this is fast forwarded as much as possible. So I think what we saw was some specific uh, timelines uh, and to me, you know, the timeline for the rollout is not as significant as the timeline for the actual services to become available. And again, uh, what is of significance is not whether I'm able to use 5G. Right now, for example, I am on a 5G connection to a landline. But so what is significant is not just the rollout of 5G, but actually the unique kind of services which only a 5G and particularly a mobile 5G can uh, enable. Uh, you know, Jaydeep Ghosh, Prakash Tiwan, we've got Dipan Mehta as well joining in, and uh, Sanjay Kapoor has been present with us from the very beginning. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for waiting by. Jaydeep, how should we understand enterprise pricing? We have a sense of what B2C pricing is. We get the ARPUs from the telecom operators every quarter. But suppose I am a manufacturing plant, and I want 5G to enable Industry 4.0. Your thoughts on how, you know, we should start thinking about how operators can start pricing in 5G services to enterprises. Okay. I've been, I've observed over the years, remember, you tend to ask the difficult questions to me. Over many years, I'm like kind of, uh, you know, things which either nobody knows or definitely I do not know. I See, enterprise, we have worked a little bit. I, have, I personally also I have some information which I may share at a high level. Some of the more technology kind of enterprise customers, they have been, you know, running uh, pilots, not necessarily with 5G, but with 4G. So as and when 5G comes, they can launch. So there is some amount of readiness there in terms of what, uh, you know, some of the more tech-oriented uh, uh, manufacturing companies for their, you know, within manufacturing plant area and captive kind of, uh, you know, uh, geographies, et cetera. So that pricing is uh, nothing to do with, you know, ARPU. And anyway, I, I stopped looking at ARPU many years back. And I think the right person to comment is my uh, good friend Sanjay on, on what are the right, uh, you know, KPIs to look. I think these prices will, this, these will not be a bandwidth of the solution. I'll keep it short. I think these solutions will involve not only a telecom operator or in case that CNP and captive non-public, you know, spectrum, some of the, you know, uh, large enterprises may take. It will not be a bandwidth based or or only you know per GB uh, etc. kind of uh, pricing. It will be a solution in which you need the telco, you need you know system integrators, other solution providers etc. to specify what is the need that particular enterprise or even government customers, smart uh, cities etc. or even for you know the fleet uh, <clears throat> uh, management of uh, large fleets etc. And that kind of pricing will depend on many factors. It's not only um, nothing to do with uh, you know uh, mm. how much bandwidth or how much minutes or things like that. The pricing may not be as simple. Also, in terms of you know uh, so and so dollars per month or something, it could be different innovative models. You know, you do this that much pricing. There could be a lot of sharing model. We have seen. Uh, uh, I have been in involved for many years in the revenue sharing model. And those models we should see. So okay. in short, I don't think it's going to be a very plain vanilla per month, dollars, rupees, so and so. It's, it could be a stitched solution and the pricing will be based on the uh, solution impact on the customer over a period of time. No, absolutely. It's going to be a very complex pricing, which is why I posed this question to you, Jaydeep. But uh, Prakash, um, the 
you know, Bharti as well as Reliance Geo committed to their rollout timelines. Uh, Vodafone idea was a bit vague. They just said, Kumar Mangal and Birla just said that we will begin our 5G rollout journey soon. Uh, what did you make of that? You know, so I, I think it very clearly indicates uh, the level of preparedness is probably not uh, as high as, as you would see in the other two cases. Uh, that that uh, the company could be very specific, right? So, I mean, they could have at least mentioned when they could begin or, you know, uh, uh, what, what kind of a stage they are uh, looking at uh, completing all the rollouts in. But nothing of that sort came in. So the lack of specifics is, is definitely something which uh, is, is uh, you know, in a way, uh, thought-provoking. Uh, and, and, and I think it's more to do with the state of the business, the current business itself, uh, in, in, in terms of the capital restructuring, as I said, uh, which has been pending a long time now. Uh, you know, interestingly, the rollout plans uh, are, are far more aggressive or impressive, as uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar very rightly said, than what we were anticipating. I mean, uh, December 23 is just, just about 12 months plus from here. It was about 15 months away of sorts. And and that's that's precisely what uh, I, was, I was talking about, that the potential to re-rate for some of these companies, the businesses, the revenue models, is going to be dependent on uh, how the adaptation takes place. One is the rollout issue, and the other is how soon the experience, uh, the user experience, starts translating into revenues. And that could probably be sooner than 2025. Is is my guess. You know, uh, in in terms of reaching the optimal level. So 20, 2024, if that's that's like what you're looking at in terms of the growth area. Vodafone again uh, is is nowhere uh, in in the picture at this point in time to kind of assess. Uh, all of those, uh, you know, values in terms of if you were to work backwards. So I, I think it, it's going to be a little bit of a miss for them uh, for sure at this point in time, unless they come up with a belated rollout plan and that's more specific than what um, we were till date. Mm. Uh, Dipan, is the lack of specifics from Vodafone Idea a bit worrying to you? And also want you to comment on the statement made by Mukesh Ambani where he said that we'll ensure high quality 5G but the most affordable rates. So I want you to pick on that point about affordability. If 5G is going to be very affordable, what does that mean for telecom operators, ARPUs from here on, and a price increase? Yeah, good afternoon, uh, rather good morning, and thanks for having me on your show. First on Vodafone, I think that uh, I agree with Prakash that, again, the uncertainty around Vodafone has just gone one decibel higher, and the recent uh, announcement made by Indus Towers about recovery, I think that puts an element of, uh, I would say, fear in the minds of investors of Vodafone. And one really needs to consider an investment uh, in that company at this point of time. They've been trying to raise resources, but have not succeeded so far. Uh, so let's hope for uh, everyone's um, benefit. The company is really able to turn around its operations. Uh, coming to your second question about uh, affordability. See, I think telecom companies have to say that it's going to be affordable. Uh, and that's how they're going to market uh, these particular uh, schemes as well. Uh, whether actually, of course, the initial uh, uh, packages will be affordable, but then, you know, I think you would see creeping prices uh, going up over there for those packages. End of the day, the telecom companies are there to um, make the maximum out of this opportunity. And the customers that they're going to be catering to for 5G are the ones who can pay a significantly higher tariff plan as well. And they're going to exploit this particular opportunity as well. Uh, there would be only basically two players who are going to offer uh, this particular uh, package or this particular service. And that eventually, maybe not in the first quarter, the second quarter, but once the excitement around 5G kind of settles down and dies down, I'm pretty certain that both the telecom companies uh, will engage in trying to increase their tariff plans, which will be very positive for the, for the telecom companies per se, especially the return ratios. And only after they see how, how these prices are being absorbed, Will look at expanding the 5G network and investing more in that particular uh, sort of capex plan for that particular service. Mm. Well, even if uh, the telecom operators take a massive ARPU hike, they will still be the most affordable in India. India's ARPUs would roughly be what two dollars, or um, you know, close to two dollars. I think in China it would be six, seven dollars. In EU, it would be in excess of twelve dollars. So even if they take a very, very, very big price hike, they would still be the most affordable. Uh, Tarun, um, you know, all the operators were fairly quiet on uh, the you know context of devices, the pricing, uh, which is your area 
Uh, what did you make of uh, you know the conversations, uh, the statements, the comments that we heard from the telecom operators uh, as well as the minister? I think they are, they are already quite positive on that. They might have already seen it um, on the network. They, uh, like I said, there are already 50 million 5G devices that are being uh, there already in the hand of the consumers. Um, so they are quite assured on the device ecosystem. I think the challenges are more on the adoption curve. Uh, so looking at the example from the China, uh, there is like almost like nine out of 10 new phones are a 5G phone in China. But if you look at from the subscriber point of view, almost 50% of those 5G users on the, on the devices are actually using a 4G data pack. So, so the point is, even in a, one of the biggest country in the world, people are still not using the 5G uh, plans in the more aggressive way than it should have been. And even looking at the telcos where the 5G networks have been lit up like two years, three years back, the average increase in the worldwide operator's revenue has gone up by only two to 3%. So India needs to be, uh, I'll say from the operator's point of view, they will be cautiously optimistic on that to see how the India specific use case will be there. And the mind share of the 5G within, within the consumers is likely to be very high. Now, the point is when you have an expectation very high of a particular services, then the experience should also be on the similar grounds. Otherwise, it will be like um, what you expect and what you get will be on a different platform altogether. And we are looking at a very, very aggressive rollout uh, right now. Um, so that needs to be uh, looked into. I think if we get that timing right, um, then the ARPU is going to be somewhere between 250, 300, and that will be that that is going to be great news for the operators. So I think um, device ecosystem to coming back to your uh, question, I think they are quite uh, assured of that. Looking at even the uh, component uh, ecosystem, the kind of innovation we are seeing in, even on the RFFE part, which is a critical part of the 5G devices. I think we, we are good, a very strong development and innovation is already happening on the devices side of things. Mr. Upal, first question, your top three takeaways from Prime Minister's speech. Well, a key takeaway, of course, is the Prime Minister's very strong belief in the power of technology and the power of Indians to deliver on technology goals. Uh, so that is huge. The Prime Minister clearly sees the need to improve the environment for technology as an important policy objective. And he also sees 5G as a technology which will have a much wider and pervasive impact on both individuals and more importantly the economy so uh, and hope, and of course in that sense it will also make india extremely competitive because a lot of the use cases a lot of the software a lot of um, increasingly more and more hardware is being uh, being uh, designed in India and in some of it even being made in India. So that means that India can probably play a, a larger role in the 5G ecosystem. And uh, that is the <coughs> the kind of belief he has. Hmm. Uh, Dipal, 4G heralded uh, the app economy. Movie streaming was not possible with 3G, but it was possible with 4G, booking Ubers. And there were so many other apps which became ubiquitous thanks to 4G. Uh, the SaaS businesses mushroomed all over the world. What will 5G do? And any particular stocks that you would watch outside of the listed telecom names, you know, in the stock market, but say something like a Nazara, which is into gaming. Any other, from a stock market point of view, what do you think 5G can do? Yeah, Rima, I think 5G will eventually be a game changer for a lot of these new age digital businesses. And you spoke about Nazara. I think uh, clearly new opportunities will open up for Nazara in the gaming sector because new gaming apps can be launched based on 5G. And mind you, these will be focused on the premium customer because that's where the 5G usage will start first. And that's the market that companies like Nazara and other new age digital businesses want to capture. So they will devise special games and service offerings around 5G, uh, which will enable them to increase their revenue. Uh, then there are other companies like Nika, which will use it extensively for marketing and displaying of their products and how to use it and for better, in better customer communication as well as feedback. Who knows, I think even companies like Zomato 
um, may, may use 5G to show you how your food is being prepared or have a chat with the chef when it is happening. So, you know, the uh, kind of uh, uses of 5G are unimaginable. As we wrap up on the special coverage of 5G, as we herald, uh, you know, 5G in India, we leave you with some statements made by Akash Shambani, who was speaking at the 5G launch event. Take a look and thank you for watching. Jio ne jaise Shri Mukesh Ambani ji mere pitaji ne bataya Jio ka pura plan hoega ki December tak pura India cover ho jayega. Bhag bhag India me apn dekhenge ki 5G ke anusar bahut chare ne applications aayenge aur jaise Prime Minister Modi ji ne bola tha ki nee kranti chalu ho jayegi India me. Absolutely ham bahut affordable karenge har har ek Bharat. वासी को अफोर्डेबल होना चाहिए डिवाइस के लेके सर्विस तक सब कुछ तैयार करेंगे थैंक यू